Thank you for tuning in to Revive Recap. Throughout this podcast, we'll discuss different ministry topics taking place here at Island Church Galveston. Hello and welcome to another episode of Revive Recap. My name is Josh Pan. I'm here with Breland Martin. Um, this ministry is designed to uh, discuss certain topics, especially things that pastor preaches during the week on Sundays or Wednesdays and um, just things that may come up. So uh, let's get started. What do you think? Sound like a plan, Stan? Sounds like a plan. Stan. Cool. So this last week, Pastor talked about um, Mary Magdalene, um, and this was uh, in John 20. Um, we looked it up, verse 11, I guess. But um, basically, he was referring to uh, her resolve um, uh, as a follower of Jesus and how how she was uh, consistent. She pursued him with everything, that after the tomb um, or after the, the stone was rolled away, she shows up and it's in the, the dark of the day or the morning, um, and that she, you know, probably one of the worst nights they've ever had, you know, their Lord and Savior died on the cross. He was buried, right? And she showed up to the last place that she remembered he was at. And there was a lot in what he said that we're not going to be able to cover on here. Mm -hmm. Um, but some of the key takeaways had to do with, um, basically, uh, uh, um, knowing that point at which you're, you know, how, what did he say? He said that, um, what is that point in which you, uh, something about quitting, I can't remember now. <laughs> I forgot how he worded it, but basically, what are the limits that you're willing to take yourself to for Jesus? Mm -hmm. um, what is a point where you know um, that you, um, have you... Is there a specific resolve that you could have mm -hmm. that's immovable in you when it comes to Jesus? And that's kind of where she was coming from, where she didn't care, you know, about what she's like, I just want to see him. I just want to see him. I just want to see him. And then he talked also about time eroding our faith and things like that. And so um, as far as your takeaways, I mean, yeah, what are you what are your thoughts? I know I kind of stumbled through that. Um, that was good. Um, whenever we were talking about kind of at the beginning he was just kind of reading through and um telling telling the story of it because I think even when you it's so plain and 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 clear even when you're just reading through it it like preaches its itself almost like you can see that she was one of the only ones going back he had all these disciples he had all these followers all these people who um he healed all these people who got miracles from him, yet she was the one who never stopped going back, even after every all hope looked lost, every everything looked hopeless, like she was never going to see him again. She was the one who kept going back. So in the beginning, he was kind of talking about like why that is, and I really liked what he said. Um, he said Jesus wasn't just her favorite preacher. Jesus was her God and her Lord. In, instead so that's was one of my biggest takeaways that I want to kind of talk about like what's the difference between being like a follower of Christ or like a Christian or something like that versus like making Jesus Christ the Lord of your life like yeah. what is how, what is the difference in that what was the difference between Mary Magdalene and maybe some of the other disciples other disciples that didn't see it quite the way she saw it you know things right. like that yeah and um I remembered what he said, or I looked it up while you were talking. Uh -huh. But he said, "What's <laughs> oh, it?" Yeah, he's like, he said, "What? What's it gonna take?" Sorry, I didn't mean it like that. I was still listening. Um, but he said, "What's What's it gonna take for you to quit coming to Jesus?" Right. Yeah. Like, yeah, is yeah. there something? And it's rhetorical. No, there shouldn't be anything. Mm -hmm. um, but oftentimes we think of like obstacles or this metal core portal, but it's actually beyond that. Mm -hmm. It's like, what's it gonna take? And the answer should be nothing. Um, in spite of the doctor's reports or the rough relationship or the, the, you know, the fear, the torment, yeah. like what's it going to take? Nothing, mm -hmm. nothing should make you quit coming to him. But then as you mentioned, you know, he dove deeper into what's it going to take? Well, um, what about like the other disciples, like Peter and I think it was John showed up and mm -hmm. they look in the tomb and they see the clothes laying there and they see it and they're just like, okay, like it, I don't know if I like, knowing what they knew and mm -hmm. how many times he was very clear about how he would be resurrected and how he'd come back from the dead. Like mm -hmm. I'd be looking for him. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't go home like they did. You know, I'd be like, okay, but where, where is he? Like if he's, that's awesome. He's not, you know, he's resurrected, but where is he? You know? And, um, 
to so in reference to your question, like especially when it comes to making him Lord versus like following after someone, we talk about this a lot, but there's a certain amount of intimacy you have to have mm-hmm. um, with God in order for him to switch from being your favorite preacher and message to your your Lord, your Savior, your God. Yeah. And um, as far as Mary Magdalene, uh, what what are we talking about here? Well, she um, obviously was thankful and she probably meditated on a, a lot, everything that he's brought her through. Um, yeah. All of the demons, all of the, you know, I mean, being from a, a brothel and all these things, like imagine the, the tormenting memories, imagine the fear she may have of men, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, or, or all sorts of things that are built... He just washed her clean of all that. And then she watched him do that to every other person as she yeah. followed him more. And everything he said was just, oh my goodness, like revelation, revelation. I've never heard that. This is delivering me from this thought, from this or whatever. And, yeah. you know, we have to remember that they didn't have a Bible at Bible studies. They didn't have a, on their phone, they weren't on, you know, the Bible app with Bible Project playing historical context <laughs> videos and things like that, right? Yeah. Like they heard his word and that was it. That's it came from his mouth and that's it. Yeah, That's all they had. So they hung on every, and, and so pursuing him now looks like going to the word and prayer and things like that. Mm-hmm. But really you should imagine yourself as, as in that Bible study with him and he's just speaking. There's that level of I- intimacy that you hit and that's when faith comes. That's when the hearing of the of the word. But you don't get that from getting the message from someone else or mm, creating an atmosphere um, of you know music and praise and and I heard this and I thought it was really cool. But you you can be a good teacher or preacher. Or you can be anointed to be a teacher or preacher. You could be a good uh, talented musician, but you have to be anointed to be a true worshiper of God. Mm, there's there's yeah. different things that the Holy Spirit anoints and provides. So that when you are hearing a message, it just doesn't make you feel good. It changes something in you. In fact, most of the times for me, good messages challenge the mess out of me. Yeah. Like I, I just, oh, it's too. most, <laughs> yeah, like most of it is, it's not that it sounded good and made me feel good. It actually made me feel like, dang, I need to, I need to sh- sh- change what I'm doing. I need to change my attitude. I need to, mm-hmm. there's some things I need to fix or address. And so is that, I mean, yeah. what do you think? I agree. Yeah, I think that's true. I liked what you said about like, getting something from someone else versus like getting it for yourself. I think that's part of it. Another thing I was thinking of too, like, cause she got healed of all these demons, but a lot of people got healed of demons. You know, a lot of people got healed from diseases they had since birth. A lot of people got delivered from, you know, different things. But I think too, what's interesting is like when she was delivered of these things and healed, she followed after him after that. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So I feel like, too, part of that lordship looking at, like, us now in our lives, it's kind of like the difference between maybe um, going to God like a like a counselor. Like, you're going through your life, and then you're like, okay, I can't do this on my own, so I have to go to God. Or I can't do this on my own, so I have to go to God. Versus God leading your life and you, like, following him in every decision, even the small ones or ones that seem like they're um, maybe less significant or, oh, God wouldn't care. God doesn't care what I do about this. God doesn't care about what I do about this. Instead, it's like she was following him everywhere that he went and that became her life, following Jesus wherever he went. You know what I mean? Instead of maybe just going back to whatever she had. She left everything behind just to follow him. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So that's kind of what I was thinking too. Also, too, I, I, when I think of lordship, it's I think for us, especially like what like millennials in a first world like country, right? Like, like I just found out I'm a millennial. By I'm way. not a millennial. It's oh okay. well, sorry. Yeah, he's to, a millennial. I'm not. A millennial. I don't mean to include you yeah, into okay. what I'm in, <laughs> but even though I didn't know what I didn't even know. Anyways, but the point I'm making is, it, it comes to perspective. We talked about how they didn't have the word or yeah. their phone or their app, right? Like being intimate with Jesus was inevitable. You you would be in his presence mm-hmm. at, at that time. And obviously we have more, we have more ability to do that now than they did back then because mm-hmm. they saw human Jesus. And it's just like they say, you know, don't get to know your heroes or don't, don't meet your heroes or things like that. Mm-hmm. Like you, uh, that's happened to even me, like some of the big preachers that I've, I've met or I've talked to, like, it's not that I didn't like them or anything, but it humanized them. And then I realized, oh man, I'm actually, this is idolatry. Like, I just really liked mm-hmm. this guy when I didn't, but the reality of it was like, he's just, yeah. 
just a creature. A <laughs> he's just a guy that God is using, yeah. and he's and you know, and mm-hmm. and so in the same way, when you're when you um, we have that ability with with God to pursue him at a closer level than they did, even though he was flesh and blood, because of that simple fact that he was flesh and blood, yeah. that he was in front of them. That, And I heard a minister say this, but I mean, he had to use the bathroom. You know what I mean? Like you, you talk about son of man yeah. and he's doing all these miracles, whatever. He's like, hey, I got to go use the John. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. it's so there's, there's so many things that you can be limited by Jesus in the human form versus Jesus through the Holy Spirit and God. That's, that's in us, right? Yeah. And so, um, so I guess- So it's like if she could do that then- you right. know what I mean? Follow him with everything she had. She had to leave, physically leave everything else behind. Like right. how much more can we follow him? Right. And everything, you know? Well, it looks different for us. Yeah. Because he will still let us enjoy the things we enjoy. Right. And live the way we live with him as the focal point. Mm-hmm. And that's what I was saying as far as lordship is concerned. I don't think we truly understand what that means. Because when you look at lords back then... We talk about bond servants and mm-hmm. slaves. Like you are not just a, you're a bond servant. Yeah. That means that you're willingly, the debt's been paid, but you're willingly, ser- you're washed. When's the last time you washed someone's feet? When's the last time, you know what I mean? You've right, actually yeah. were, it's different. and it's different, but it still has the same magnitude for us. Okay, well, what does Lordship look like in my life? Mm-hmm. And that means no decision that I make is based off of my own and just my own decision yeah. Making. Uh, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Everything is cut off the edge of, okay, God, is this something that you want me to do or not want me to do? And we, like I said, as a first world where we don't experience as problems like they do in many other areas or even in the past, it's just like, you know, for us, it's like, well, what do you mean I have to ask, you know, for permission? Like, I just, this is just something I want to pursue. It's a goal. I think it's important that I go to school for this. I think it's like, mm-hmm. but... But yes, that's good. That's great. But but who was Lord over that decision? You or him? Mm-hmm. Who who decided to initiate that? You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And so, but that takes a willingness as well. Yeah. And that's, you know. I think that goes into kind of the other thing that you were talking about when it's like, what what does it take for you to quit coming to, yes. to Jesus about things like that? Because if we're talking about, you know, him being Lord over your life and talking about Oops. And talking about like what that means and stuff. Um, having that resolve, I guess that's the word you use that you're kind of talking about. Right. Is the only way that you can have or have making him Lord is the only way that you can have that resolve that you're talking about of like the answer is no. There's nothing that will get me to quit coming to Jesus because right. um, if you don't, then the more distracted you get that's what'll keep you from coming to him or the more right. whatever the like you're talking like if it's something medical or if it's something here whatever is bigger is what you'll start going to instead of going to Jesus yeah i actually i thought of a question well or just kind of a thought like i thought of a thought um well. <laughs> you know we say would anything get you to stop coming to him but that that only happens if you know that it's getting in the way type thing mm-hmm. like for instance if someone were to come up to you and they're like, hey, I really need help. You know, I'm believing God for this, but I just keep hitting this obstacle or whatever. And it's like, well, um, you know, did you did you know or do you, how do I put it? Like sometimes people will, will seek other people instead of him, if that makes sense. Oh, so then when they ask yeah. for advice and things like that, mm-hmm. they may see Christian friends. And it's kind of the same concept as seeking a preacher or whatever, but it's the same concept. Like they want uh, affirmation. They even want uh, 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 guidance, so to speak, in line with what they're already thinking when they come to you. Mm-hmm. And so, like, they're not actually addressing the lordship thing. Like, who is lordship over that decision mm-hmm. that you're trying to press so hard? They will say, "Well, I think that God." Like, and I, I don't, I don't necessarily have a question, but I think it's it's interesting to note that you don't develop that resolve uh, without the basic, like relationship uh, uh, protocol in your daily life, if that makes sense. Like, yeah, I see. Um, like with my wife, you know, I can't expect to confide in her and, or her and me if we did, we only talk every three months mm-hmm. or if we like really, really talk. Mm-hmm. We have, commu- we, her and I, whether we understand it or not or are aware of it, we communicate every day. 
Like there are some days where if she works nights, I'll see her for maybe 20 minutes a day. But in that 20 minutes, there's communication going on. Yeah. Or even the space in communication is communicating something, right? So like the awareness of that. But that only happens in your 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 ability to to understand or at least to be aware of the minutia of that interaction or that ongoing communication comes with a basic level of here is what talking with him or her sounds like or mm-hmm. is like. And I and all that to say, I think that there's an issue that the people have where when they hear, you know, did you pray about it or have you read your book? Yeah, they may have like read a scripture or they, and I mean, Pastor really miss, told me, said this and it, it blew me away, but he said, yeah, they may most of the time or many times when people tell you they pray about something, they've just spent a lot of time thinking about it. They didn't actually pray about mm-hmm. it. So it's like that mental ascension thing where it, when people come, they're like, hey, or, or when people are dealing with something, they're like, you know, is this God or, or, or you know, they, they don't have that resolve because they didn't do the basics mm-hmm. of just um, spending time with him when they didn't need him for anything. Yeah. It was mainly just to spend time with him because he's Lord and you have mm-hmm. to, and you just do it. Mm-hmm. And, and so does that make sense? So yeah. I'm not really sure where I'm going with that, but the only thing I could really, uh, that kind of drew my attention to that was, I mean, if you think about that, do you really, can you, it, you will not be able to develop a resolve at all without the basic time with him because without the basic time with him, or that, that, that basic level of understanding and that communication, then when the things come, you're always seeking him from a need-based communication mm-hmm. or reaction. And so the only way you actually know him is your resolve becomes when I need him, he'll be there. But in other times I'm just going to kind of do whatever. Yeah. yeah. As opposed to this <laughs> steady. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, but I love that he brought that up about Mary Magdalene, about how she took a second look. Oh, yeah. And so uh, kind of shifting gears. Um, but I guess for me, it's so profound, but like you often think that the things of God are just, you know, like it's always going to work out. Mm-hmm. And that when obstacles come, yeah, you know, I mean, I'll get through it. But then, you know, you're discouraged or you're worried about just, I don't know. And and so it's sometimes it's, there have been many times in my life where I like will seek out on something and I'll miss it. And I would get so downtrodden. I'd be like, Oh my gosh, like mm-hmm. how could yeah. I miss that? What should I? And it's like, God was like, what are you talking about? God like, was like, take another look. <laughs> right. Keep going. But yeah. you would address the same thing. And somehow yeah. the next time it was just, yeah. I mean, there's kind of a balance of practical and spiritual in that. So what are your, what are your thoughts? <laughs> um, well, another like big takeaway that I had that I think goes along with what you're saying was whenever he said, um, it's not about, it's not about what you can get from Jesus. It's about what he already put into you. And he said, that's what you have to nurture. And so I think, um, you were talking about kind of like having a need based relationship with God and not getting to the point where you're intimate enough with him just as your Lord and there every day. So you only end up going to him when you need something. I think that's kind of a similar thing as what I took that note on, because um, if you're, when you're doing that, you're really thinking about what can I get from God and what, what do I need in my life that I can't provide for myself kind of. And it's like, that's the moment when you go to God, when in reality, God, Jesus did everything he needed to do already on the cross, right? And so when you receive salvation, like you have everything inside of you already. And so he was kind of talking about, or the way that I took what he was talking about was like that intimacy with God is you nurturing what he already put inside of you the moment that you got saved. That's like you nurturing that. And then all the peripheral things that you need, it's like they happen it's not like you know you just go to god whenever you find that there's a need that's like what can i get what can i get instead yeah. of nurturing the, the revelations that you've already gotten the things that god has already given you that's kind of how i took it i don't know if that's how you took it no absolutely it it yeah. also um <laughs> you made a face that no no i it just it. <laughs> it was i mean i was really thinking that was good i i i i i i i mean to add to that there are so many different dynamics that of god mm-hmm. uh, god the person, you know, in the same way that we have so many different uh, um, relational um, attributes. And 
when you only pick on one attribute and mm-hmm. that's damage control Jesus. When yeah. there's damage, I need you to fix it. When there's damage, I need... And you miss out on everything else that he is. And so in that process of going to him at a needs-based thing, you miss out on... Um, so really in the same context, um, it's not what you can get from him, but what he can put into you. Well, if you're only going to him for damage control, mm-hmm. for what he can you can get from him in that area... What gets put into you is only damage control, Jesus, not mm-hmm. love, not joy, not peace, not it's I'll, I'll fix this. I'll fix this. I'll fix this. Mm-hmm. And so that perpetuates and you don't you, you don't have a relationship with him. It's I would bring up my wife a lot, but like I'm she's my wife. So I'm the most intimate with her and expression it as far as relationship, you know, attributes go. Man, if she only came to me when there was trouble, like we would have. Yeah. That's not a relationship. That's yeah. not a and it's but. When in the times that there aren't trouble, where we're enjoying each other and 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 laughing and and playing with our kids and really discussing things and really getting into different things, that's where that relationship builds, and that's when things actually get put in besides just the damage control stuff. Yeah. And so, interestingly enough, people can live their whole lives in that perspective of what they can get, and it may not even be like a, you know, the the, I guess, I don't know. The only thing I can think of is like the name it and claim it, glab it and bra- blab it and grab it oh, that pastor uh-huh. talks about. But like, like a prosperity. material need, Right, thing. like I want a new car, I want a this. I want, but I'm talking about people who genuinely want to serve God but aren't taught the way to have relationship with him. Mm. They go to him, speaking specifically of religious, you know, strongholds and de- denominational teaching. They, they go to him, well, I, it'd be cool if he did this. And then, they exclude him in every other part of his life, of their lives, um, because they just don't know how to have relationship with him. Mm-hmm. And that's why I, I kind of saw it that way. It, yeah. it can be very damaging because you look at him as this like, yeah, he'll get me out of it. Or even some cases, of, well, I hope he gets me out of it type thing. Yeah. I know he can. I hope he does. And yet you miss out on an entire uh, five different attributes of him, infinite, di- infinitely different attributes of him that you don't get to he doesn't get to express because Mm -hmm. you don't let him you don't see him that way yeah you know what i mean yeah that's it reminds me of like something i think we've i think it was here that i heard it i think i hope so Mm. but it was something like it was during uh praise and worship and then it was like during praise they were saying like you, th- you thank God for the things that he's done in your life, for the things that he's given you, like all these things, right? Yeah. You thank God for this, but then during worship, you worship God not for what he's done, not for what he's given you, but for who he is as God and, Whoa. you know, stuff like that. That's what it kind of just reminded me of because I feel like that's kind of the difference in those things or the difference in like that mindset. Because, yes, everybody can think of things they're thankful for, things that God has given them, but you don't know until you know. You know what I mean? Like that sounds dumb, but until you actually experience the difference between being thankful for what God's done for you versus being thankful for who God is, it's like, it's harder to (laughs) conceptualize that because you just have to, you have to, you have to actually enter into that relationship with him like you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then, um, we've got a few minutes. I wanted to talk about, um, time and it eroding Mm -hmm how pastor said that time um, is the number one thing that will erode your faith if you let it Mm -hmm. and it only by your consent. And um, he talked about how, so really we've covered, you know, um, uh, developing this resolve, you know, taking another look, like just pressing in and, and making God, not just a need based thing, but just an entirety of your being making him Lord, but actually figuring out what Lord means first Mm -hmm. and then making him Lord and then, um, you know, pressing in. And we, the reason I think he brought up time was because there will be time or quote unquote seasons where Mm -hmm. you feel like there's no activity, like there's nothing going on. Like there's, Mm -hmm. and, and, um, you know, like you're like, well, is this even, did I even really hear from it? Where doubt can surface Mm -hmm. because of there is no actual activity in the natural. Like where you, man, yeah. this was the same as yesterday. Mm-hmm. Tomorrow's probably gonna be, and it could be that way, you know, X, Y, Z, depending on what you're believing for, months, years even, you know? Like what, well, what do you think um, as far as time goes? Like why 
do you think it's so easy to fall into um, to fall fear. out of faith or fall, into fear? There we go. Same thing. same thing. Out of faith yeah. into fear. <laughs> Man. Hashtag, you know, name of our new mixtape. But <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah. I think because we live we live in time and God is outside of time. Yeah. Sometimes it's just like um we forget that God operates outside of time and that you know it's easy the longer like you're saying it erodes faith which like that when I think of that I think about slowly you know what I mean like oh sorry I don't know if that's a is that a geology it is like rocks right (laughs) it's like it's like a little bit out of time and it takes a long time for it to actually be gone so I think it's it's the reason that it's easy for that to happen is because it's like the little things or what what is the scripture where it's like it's the little foxes small foxes spoil the vine right so yeah. it's like as time passes if you let one little thing erode you know a part of it a part of it a little bit a little bit a little bit then you get to the point where you're like whoa wait where'd all my faith go type thing I see. and you're not realizing it because it's small or unnoticed and and right. that's how i kind of think of why i think it's easy because um sometimes or not easy but like we end up falling into this place because it happens kind of slowly and subtly. And yeah. then you just find yourself in a place where you're like, whoa, wait, what happened? You know? Right. Type, type of your, thing. your norm changes. Your, mm. you, you develop a new norm that's way below your, uh, your, the standards you had before. Mm. And so for, at that point, you're like, this is normal. Why? I, I haven't done anything. It's like, but that's, it's just that you haven't. Mm-hmm. These thoughts, these doubts, these unbeliefs, they started like little tic tac sized comments yeah. and thoughts. And you didn't address them. Yeah. And slowly but surely they brought you down to a level that you didn't even realize you were at. Yeah. And that's what he said. He said the busyness of life. Mm -hmm. He said you can Mm -hmm. even get busy in ministry. Like you get busy and you leave those things unaddressed. Mm -hmm. But essentially in reference to what we've been talking about, you aren't consistent. Mm -hmm. Um, You didn't, your resolve shifted. Um, You basically didn't make him Lord for everything Mm -hmm. or all the time. And then that slowly started to erode away. Yeah. Another thing I thought about, especially when it came to time, I love what you said about how God operates outside of time. So why would we, Mm -hmm. like, we'd have, he, that's a construct of man. So for us to put him on that same metric is kind of absurd because then he's going to be like, what do you mean you're timing me? Like, this doesn't make any sense. Like, if it's 30 years or 300 years and I said it's going to happen, it's going to happen. It doesn't matter about the time thing. What matters is your faith, like Mm -hmm. in the time, you know, that you're waiting, I guess, or believing me for it. But one of the things that I thought about too was, um, I guess guess depending on what you're believing God for, when you think of when you're believing God, you have this expectancy of something to change in the natural, Mm -hmm. right? Because that's really what you're believing God for in anything. Something in the natural has to change, whether it's a, um, the way you, maybe react to something or maybe something you receive in the natural, whatever. But if he's promised it in the supernatural, then the only way that you can really have faith is in the supernatural, Mm. true faith. Yeah. So that, so he said that, um, oh man, I want to talk about so much more, but he had said that, um, when you are busy and, and things happen and then all of a sudden time erodes your faith and things like that, he said that you lose your passion. Mm. And he said, then that's a terrible thing to do because when you lose your passion, you will lack in God's compassion. And the prefix mm. come means to together. So if there's no passion for him, I, I, I mean, I, I totally pulled a, a little tagline, but if there's no passion for him to come in onto, there will be no compassion, right? <laughs> right. Yes. Come on, that was clutch. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if there's no, <laughs> but that's the thing. And then you'll start to take that lack of passion out on other people. Mm-hmm. You won't have the same compassion he wants you to have in your relationships in regular life. You become more critical. You become bitter. You become all these things um, yeah. because you lost your passion for God. And so yeah. um, I'm not really sure the point I was going to make before, but yeah. this kind of sp- sprung well, up. Something I was going to say too that I think, or something that I think, I don't know, sure, is like I think God operates outside of time, but like, he understands that we operate inside time. Dang, that's so good. I feel like he also, we, or what helps me is like remembering that God has also given us things to um, strengthen us, 
to sustain us. You know, we have the Holy Spirit. We have um, the fruit of the Spirit, joy, peace, patience, like all these things. Um, he knows that because we operate inside of time, there are things that will help us make it make it easier for us, keep mm-hmm. us on track. And like he I think it's cool that even though he really kind of doesn't have to, he still provides us with um ways to help us deal with the fact that we do operate inside yeah. of time and he operates outside of time. Right. You know what I mean? His compassion or he understands. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He he under because he I mean he was Jesus. So he <laughs> he has been inside of time and he understands, you know, and stuff like that. And so I was just thinking of different things like um, you know, I think about the service that we had, not this past week, but before that we had kind of talked about where it's like refreshing from moves of the Holy Spirit. Like God didn't have to give that to us, but he loves us and he did. And he wants us to have times where we're refreshed and we experience the presence of God, you know, maybe in a time where we're waiting or where it feels like time is long or something, you know, kind of like what you were talking about. That's just a thought that I had. No, 100%. I didn't even think about that. We talk about Jesus and God, but what about the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit's job is to comfort us, to mm-hmm. be our intercessor, to our standby, to go to stay in the gap, to do all these things for us, to help us communicate in that way. And you talk about like two Sundays ago, it was wild. It was epic. If you didn't watch it or see, it, check it out, it was awesome. Yeah. But I mean, he didn't even preach for that long. He just sensed an unction and then it came on and everyone just took off. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like it was a, yeah. And you, like you said, God's, God, doesn't have to do that but he does yeah and even, or even you, like words that's like what i was about words to say some words of knowledge right um tongues interpretation like all these spirits right that's our the tag whole point that's our tag ladies and gentlemen for school of the spirit april to august 2024 that's be there or be tag. square more details to follow <laughs> oh, <I was> like, <laughs> <laughs> no yeah i'm, I'm advertising true but, but seriously but yeah but that's people don't get taught on that stuff anymore either yeah. And so accurately taught. I'm not talking about the crazy sensationalist <laughs> stuff. Yeah. But but um, anyways, and we'll close on this, but basically God gives us the Holy Spirit, the ministry of the Holy Spirit to do all these things, yeah. to see these things yeah. in the supernatural, to allow us in those times of waiting or even to bring to fruition yeah. those things that we need to do in order for these blessings and these things to come to pass in the natural. Yeah. You know what I mean? To be birthed, so to speak. Because that's kind of what, like to bring it back to Mary, you know, um, that was another thing that he said, you know, that he, <laughs> your, your face is making me laugh. Sorry, because like, that, that was he, just so he awesome. He stopped yes. everything that he was doing. Like she was weeping, you know what I mean? She right. was emotional. She right. was maybe, com- I mean, probably confused, even though she was in faith and she was looking and she was looking, she's like, what's going on, you right. know? And he didn't have to, but he stopped everything to right. like send her out, but also to come to be a comfort to her, right? you know, and stuff like that. So pa- that- you know, what pastor said, he said, God put a delay on redemption. Yeah. So that to, because of this woman's faith, yeah, he sprung up from hell. He did that. He did a little jump. Like I saw everything that he and I literally in my mind I was like, I could see Jesus popping up. Be like, all right, I gotta go. Oh, what? Who's this? Yeah, he's like what? Okay. Uh, <laughs> and she's like, who are you? Because she doesn't recognize right, his glorified yeah. body. And he's and he's like, you know, it's me. And, and she freaks out. Yeah. And he's like, whoa, 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 don't touch me, don't touch me, don't touch me. And like in my mind, I played it out like. I don't know why God has me here, but hey, bless you. Tell everybody, it's me. It's me. Like yeah. you, you're awesome. You're great. I got to head up. I got to finish this thing. And he took off. And like the idea, like you said, that God didn't have to do that Yeah. to me is so great. To one, and why wasn't it the disciples? Yeah. Why did they go home and why did she hang out there? Yeah. Why did she so like, true. he said, she, he said this, he said, if, even if it was a dead body, he would, she would go there and worship a dead body if it meant Jesus was there. Like, yeah. come on. That's you great. know what I mean? Yeah. But the fact that he popped up and he's just like, I'm not done. Like, what am I doing here? You know? Yeah. And obviously I'm being comical, but I mean, to ima- to imagine the fact that God can, he, the, the same God that put the universe, every tiny little grain of sand to the stars into place, stopped everything, put hit the pause button and said, hey, you got to visit that woman, man. She, she that's the type of faith. Yeah. That's the, that's that John, John 20 would not exist. That's what he said. John 20 would not exist if it weren't for her yeah. so that we can pull from that. I mean, look at what it's put, produ- that f- the emotion, the excitement it's putting in us now. But to think that she just didn't quit. Yeah. She didn't do anything spectacular, but she didn't quit. All yeah. those prayer meetings that they tried to kick her out of because she was a woman, she stood there. 
Everybody that judged her and said, well, you're, you know, you're a prostitute. What do you know? You're not intelligent. You know, she's like, okay, I just want to hear what he has to say. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And all those times she could have left. And the morning of, man, where she was the, probably the most discouraged she's ever been, she's like, I got to figure this out. I'm not, nothing's going to stop me from going to him. I'm going to keep going. Yeah. Like that's, that's yeah, that's I'm getting good. emotional, man. But that's, <laughs> that is, that's awesome. I think it's a great place to end on. Yeah. Um, but anyways, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, bless you guys. Thank you for tuning in. We will, uh, we'll chat with you. Anything else? Sorry. No, no, no. Yeah. yeah. We will talk to you guys next episode. Bless you guys. Thanks.